Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to add more stuff to our puzzle game and the first thing that we're going to add is a shuffle function which will shuffle our, our pieces it will not change the position of course, it will change only the rotation because right now, as you can see, if I play on the start they always have the same direction for instance these corner pieces always are always facing that direction and the lines are always straight like that so we're going to change that so let's open the game manager and here let's create a void shuffle function and let's also call that function on the start before we forget shuffle and what this function will do is go through every single one of the pieces and rotate them either 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees or no degrees so for each uh, piece in the puzzle dot pieces first I want to generate a, a random number so int k which will be equal to a random dot range and we want this to rotate either one two or three times and the random dot range on the int it's the maximum value is exclusive meaning meaning if you put there a three this will generate a value between zero and two and we don't want that we want to generate a value between zero and three so we put here zero and four and then we want to rotate the piece that uh, whatever that k is so for int i equals zero i is smaller than k i plus plus then what we want to do is get to the piece and rotate the piece it's that simple save and let's see if this is working as expected if i play as you can see now they're shuffled in uh, different directions every time we play which is exactly what we wanted now the next thing that we want to do is to make a way for the player to win and of course for the player to win all these connections must be active so we can simply hold a, a value equal to the win value so for for instance if all the pieces are connected there's a certain number of connections in this case let me just do this so, so that we can see better there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 connections if I'm not mistaken and another cool thing is that the number of connections is equal to half of the number of exits so say this this corner has 2 exits the line has 2 exits this has 3, this has 4 and if you count them up, them up divide them by half will be the number of connections so let's create that function and also let's create here a variable to still to hold that value public int win value and we'll also hold the variable for the current value which will for now we will do nothing with it but we'll use it in the future and then also create here a function called get win value and like I said uh, we can either make the, that win value the total number of connections or the total number of uh, exits so which is double that and let's make that function here and we're going to actually make it the total number of uh, connections to make it a smaller number and it also facilitate us in a bit in the future so for each and we want to check for each piece in puzzle dot pieces we want to go for, through every one of the that pieces value so remember this is going through every piece of this puzzle and then inside each piece so for each uh, j and what we want to do is to, to sum or to add up all the values of that piece so we want to to look through piece dot values and so for every time we go through this piece through a piece we we add the, the the win value 
we sum it to the win value. So let's make first here a, a quick variable to represent the win value. Int win value equals zero. So in here, to the previous win value, we sum the j. And remember, because this is going through every one of the pieces values, what it will go for instance first it enters this piece then it adds this with this with this with this and then it goes for this piece adds this 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 and that and all that until there are no more pieces and then because this counts the number of exits but we want the number of connections we divide the win value by 2 so win value divided equal to 2 and then we want to return that return win value save whoops and of course because we put here a, a void that isn't working so we have to put here int and then here after we shuffle or even before it doesn't really matter we can make the puzzle dot win value which is the variable that we created on the top a second ago equal to the function that we just created get win value which returns the win value for the puzzle let's see if this is working fine so right now if I go into the manager in the puzzle as you can see that we have here the win value and if I hit play it, it, the win value is 10 and let's check if that's correct let's see if there are 10 connections so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10 so that's correct we have 10 connections that's counting correct okay now let's now let's go to the trickier part which is count the value that the puzzle has right now and what you want to do with this is count it, the number of current connections so say if we shuffle the puzzle right now the value should be four because there are four connections one two three four and of and as we play that value should be updated but for now nothing of none of that is happening <laughs> but let's get to it so to to get the number of connections I'm going to create here a public function public int sweep which sweeps through the whole puzzle and gets the number of connections and I'm going to also add it here before I forget sweep and of course we have to add it after the shuffle because only after the shuffle we want to, to count the number of connections that are now in the puzzle on the sweep there's a, a simple way to count the connections and let me explain to you what that is so what we're going to do is go through the puzzle piece by piece like in this direction then we go like that and then we go like that and what we're going to do is to check if the piece on its right so this piece has the same value as the, this piece as on the one so say here this piece is one so on the 0, 1, on the, this is 1. And now, if on the, the left side, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, this is the left. This piece is 1. Uh, right now it isn't because it's not, uh, it's not playing. Then we want to count that as a connection. And also, aside from checking to the right, we also want to check up. And by doing this to every piece, we check all of the connections. Without counting them twice or nothing like that. So... Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to do this with two for loops. I could also do it with a for each loop like I've been doing in the past, but this allows us to control the direction of the puzzle. It's not really needed. I just prefer to making it go like this, then this, then this, then just going like this. It's, <laughs> it's just some stupid thing I, I like. Anyways, int value equals zero. This is the value that will be adding up now. Like I said, we want to go through the the x first and then the y. So we start at the zero and let's make this h h h and we start at the zero and go into the value before the puzzle dot height. And then inside this we make another for loop. This time with a w for width and we want to go into the puzzle dot width. And just like that. And what this will do as you can see it goes through this loop to the zero 
line so to this line over here and then in that line it starts with the 0 1 2 3 then it goes to the next line so it goes da la la bam la 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 and whatnot now like i said i want to check the connections on the right and on top so let's say first compares top so to compare top we have to do is check if puzzle dot pieces and we want to check the current piece that we're going through which is the piece that on the x has the width and on the height has the h if this piece dot values 0 equals 1 and if puzzle dot pieces and you want to check the, the piece above this one so to do that just do the same line and the height plus 1 and you want to check if the values dot 0 and 2 is also equal to 1 if that happens then we want the value to increase so value plus plus so in case you are not understanding this very well what this is doing is for instance checking the zero value of this piece which is uh, one which is the, the value that it has in here and it goes to the piece above the above it it checks the value that it has down so zero one two on the element two it has one so because this is one and this is one that should count as a connection now we're going to do the same but to the right so let's make here compare uh, right if puzzle dot pieces and this is the exact same thing dot values and on this piece we want to check the value on the right if it equals to one and puzzle dot pieces width plus one height and if the piece on the right dot values and the value that that piece has on the left side so the left side uh, is three zero one two three also equals to one then we want to also count that as a connection so value plus plus now there's only one little thing that we should also do which is check if we're not on the edges because say if we if the the width is equal to two then we we have nothing to check here and this will give us an error so before we do this for instance for the right we only do this if the w is different from the puzzle dot width minus one so if it's not on this line over here it can compare to the right and also let's do an, a, an identical thing to the top if age different from puzzle dot height minus one meaning it's not on the last line then you can also compare it and after this is done all you have to do is return the value and of course in the in the set function you want to make the puzzle dot dot current value equal to sweep and let's now check if that counts the correct number of connections which it should save and here if i hit play right now there are one two connections and on the manager let's see how many connections that counts and as you can see it counts two connections which means it's counting correctly now just a quick way to update this uh, which will not be the definite way is to make uh, here in the piece I'm going to give it an instance of the game manager this is just so that every time we remove a piece we check we sweep the map this is not optimized right now we will do that on the next tutorial but this is just to show you so public game manager uh, GM on the start let's make the GM equals to game object dot find object with tag game controller and we want to get the component that that is called the game manager so what this is doing is finding the, the manager which will have the, the tag uh, game controller finds the manager finds this component and it assigns it to the GM variable and now on the mouse down 
after we rotate piece we run gm.sweep which is the function that you just created just like that also of course you want to make it equal to the gm.puzzle.current value so gm.puzzle.current value so what we're doing here is updating the current value by calling the sweep function every time we press a piece save play and as you can see right now there's a ton of uh, connections one two three four five that i can count as you can see it's correct five and if i rotate a piece for instance this piece it just changed to six and as i rotate the pieces as you can see the number of connections goes up until it's the same as the win value and that's it for today guys in the next tutorial i'm going to create an, an optimized way to update this current value for big maps because for big maps this is not very optimized and i'm going to also create a way to check that we won and go to the next map so that's it for today guys thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial